I first met Mac when I was a young 16 year old fireman and he made a big impression on me. Once Mac passed for driving duties it was a pleasure to be booked as his fireman. Mac is extremely knowledgeable about railways and surprisingly for an SR engineman his favourite loco class is the Gresley A4 Pacific. Hence the reason I include this shot of him in the cab of 60024 Kingfisher at Basingstoke Shed 70D in March 1966. Indeed, Mac has taken some wonderful photographs of classic Eastern Region steam at King's Cross Station and Top Shed during the early 1960s, and I can think of no better way of starting his ramblings than with this truly iconic photograph of King's Cross Station in its heyday. The shot was taken on the 15th of June 1962, with A3 Class 60062 Minuru in the foreground and an unidentified Delta Class 55 bearing the head code 1 Alpha 21, which was the 0955 AM from Newcastle, which had arrived on the adjacent platform. Framed beneath the archway, an unidentified A3 class awaits release, and a porter pushing a barrow looks across at Mac just as the camera shutter is released. Whether by luck or judgment, Mac has somehow managed to capture a classic moment in time on celluloid. Mac's first work experience was after he left Napil Secondary School in 1954 at the age of 15, joining a printing firm business called Billing and Son. The premises were then situated at Walnut Tree Close, Skilford. Incidentally, Billing and Son were the largest Bible printers in the world. Mac was given an apprenticeship there on lithographic machines, but really wanted to work on letterpress machines. He hated the job clocking in and clocking out each day, and always really wanting a job on the railway, even though his youth employment officer at school had put him off the idea. He'd mentioned that he knew a lot of engine drivers that they had awful scars on their bodies caused by heat from the fire. After about a year at this job, Mac decided to go to Guildford Loco, but when he got halfway down the steps at the entrance to the Loco, he chickened out after hearing a lot of voices from below. A further year went by before he plucked up enough courage and this time descended the steps and asked the man in the office if there were any jobs going. The running foreman took him to the upstairs office to see the shed master, Mr George Stovold. Mr Stovold asked him what he wanted and he replied that he would like a job within the motive power department. Mr Stovold then asked Mac various questions about his age and whether he was presently employed. He then produced a piece of blank paper and pen and asked Mac to spell the word locomotive and to read a passage from a book. Before Mac finished reading the passage, he stopped him and he explained that the reason he'd asked him was because a lot of people were looking for jobs, but some couldn't read or write. Luckily, he agreed to take him on, and after undergoing a medical at London Bridge, Mac started work at Guildford Loco as an engine cleaner on Monday the 3rd of September 1956. Other cleaners that he worked with at the time were Dave Alston, Eddie Wells and Bunny Pilby. Mac was only cleaning for about a month before he was booked to attend foreign school which was held at the orphanage hut Guildford Park Road with Inspector George Bolland. During the training they were shown miniature models of Stevenson and Walshart valve gear. Mac remembers that there was a small brass plaque on the side engraved with the name of who presented it to the MIC, the Mutual Improvement Class. After passing out as a past cleaner, on Mac's first firing turn, he was booked along with driver Peter Nixon, who was at the time still a past fireman. It was on a Monday morning at about 2am and they were booked to prepare an M7 tank locomotive. Mac came well equipped with his notebook that he'd prepared at foreign school, which showed everything he required, and after consulting his notebook, he went about checking that he had the necessary tools, such as a coal pick, firing shovel, gauge lamp, headlamps, assorted spanners and disc boards, and felt quite pleased with himself for what he'd completed in preparing the locomotive. Peter then asked him, have you got all of the tools that are required? And Mac replied, yes I have. Peter then said, you've forgotten the most important thing of all. And Mac said, what's that? Think, he said. And with a flash of inspiration, he replied, detonators. Yes, Peter said. 
you've forgotten to include the detonators. After preparing the fire, they moved out onto the pit road beside the water column and Mac climbed up onto the side tank to take water and put the pipe in and Peter turned the water on. Feeling somewhat elated and feeling full of his own importance, he stood up as pleased as Punch thinking, look at me, look at me. And suddenly the pipe doubled up and came flying out of the tank and soaked Peter with water in the process. A good start. However, the rest of the turn went quite well. Carriage shunting at Guildford for two to three hours. And they then went, light engine to the up yard and dropped back onto a three to four coach set and propelled it into the platform to form the 8.10am Reading service. They then got relief by another Guildford crew. Max not sure why it was an M7 tank that day, as normally the turn was worked by a T9 class locomotive over to Reading, where the engine turned and took water and returned with a 12.47pm to Guildford. Here's a list that Mac made of locomotives allocated to Guildford 70C in the years he was working there as a fireman. They include U and N class, 700 class, C class, V class schools, B4 class, M7 class, Q1 class, BR standard class and a USA class. The following series of photographs were all taken by Mac at various locations on the southern region in the early 1960s. The first being rebuilt Merchant Navy class number 35021 New Zealand line as she approaches Woking with the Waterloo Bournemouth Express on the 16th of June 1962. On the right of the photograph are offices that made up the nerve centre for the running of trains on the South Western Division. Aptly named Control, in the Second World War years, when an air raid was imminent, there were offices below ground in a concrete air raid shelter. Along the edge of the wall, there lays a vast amount of coke for the boiler house that served to heat the offices. This was systematically shoveled by hand through an opening in the wall next to a short platform. The water tower for the heating system is situated above. A stop block that protected the up local line from number one platform up bay can just be seen on the left of the photograph. N15 class number 30796 Sir Dodonas Le Savage approaches Woking Junction with an up local passenger service from Basingstoke to Waterloo in April 1962. This class of locomotive didn't have much longer to live after this photograph was taken and only one of these fine locomotives survives, number 30777 Sir Lamuel, which incidentally was the first locomotive that I cabbed as a young spotter at Woking Station in 1958. A truly excellent photo lineup of locomotives at Nine Elms MPD, featuring rebuilt Merchant Navy class number 35003 Royal Mail, with smoke box door open, and one of its superheaters extracted for maintenance purposes. Superheater elements allowed saturated steam to be heated again, which increased its thermal energy and therefore increased its efficiency. In the background are BR Standard Class 5MT 73119 Elaine, with smoke box door open, and other locomotives of the same class. Lord Nelson Class number 30862. Lord Collingwood, prepares to take coal at Basingstoke MPD. When showing this photograph to ex guildford past fireman Charlie Hampshire, he remembered being in the adjacent shed one winter's night with his driver Charlie Boskett, waiting for their locomotive to come into the depot. Charlie Boskett always carried a transistor radio with him, quite a novelty in those days, and they were both drifting off to sleep when all of a sudden the door opened and someone threw a couple of detonators into the stove and ran off. Charlie managed to rouse his driver from his slumber and grabbing his prize radio just managed to exit the hut before an explosion nearly lifted the tin roof off. U-Class number 31638 is about to haul the 3.13pm stopping service from Basingstoke to Woking. She was a Guildford based locomotive. The 70C shed plate is clearly seen on a smoke box door. 
Rebuilt Merchant Navy Class number 35002, Union Castle, gets ready to leave Waterloo on the 15th of June 1962. Originally numbered 21C2, she was one of 30 Pacific locomotives of this class, built with air smooth casing by Oliver Bullied. She was rebuilt in 1958 and was one of the most powerful Pacific class locomotives that he designed. Because of their connections with the boat traffic, they were all named after famous shipping lines at the suggestion of the then chairman of the Union Castle Line, and the class became known as the Merchant Navy class. With a firebox grate area of 48 and a half square foot, they were a magnificent locomotive to fire to, and when prepared at Nine Elms, the firebox would be filled to the brim to such an extent that the fire would be rolling out the firehole door. A four sub with tail lamp attached can also be seen in this photograph, working out of Waterloo, Windsor side, either on a round the world train, Waterloo to Windsor to Waterloo, Maine, via Kingston, or a round the loop, which was a train that left Waterloo, Windsor and returned to Waterloo, Windsor via Hounslow. U class number 31624 is about to pass Max train between Queen's Road and Clapham Junction as she works a set of empty coaching stock, ECS, from Waterloo to Walton via Brentford and Weybridge to be berthed in the sidings at Oatlands. The four chimneys at Battersea Power Station can be seen in the distance. Red Hill 75B locomotive, N class number 31851, stands in the back road at Guildford awaiting her next turn of duty, while a 700 class, black motor, stands on the next road waiting to be cold. Several other locomotives are in evidence and the pit looks as though it has had several locomotive ash pans raked out into it. A hazardous job where you always needed to know which way the wind was blowing before commencement. A 2 HAL EMU number 2662 is berthed waiting for its next trip, to Ascot probably, in the upyard carriage road. Q1 class number 33018 Heads of milk empties from Waterloo to Clapham Yard on the 15th of June 1962. The loaded milk tanks would have been emptied the previous night at Vauxhall Station, where United Dairies had a bottling plant. Loaded milk trains would have started their journey at Torrington and were unloaded at two other places besides Vauxhall, one at Kensington and the other adjacent to the London Transport Terminus at Malden. Lord Nelson class number 30856, Lord St Vincent, works a mixed freight through Basingstoke from Eastleigh on its way to Feltham in 1961. One Lord Nelson class number 30865, Sir John Hawkins, had the crank setting adjusted to give the normal four exhausts per revolution of the driving wheels, the other of the class giving eight blasts. Either way, its 33 square foot firebox great area which sloped away halfway down, wasn't easy going for the firemen. Rebuilt Merchant Navy Class number 35025, Brocklebank Line, is about to run through Platform 3 at Woking with an up express from Exeter to Waterloo as BR Standard Class 5MT number 73119, Elaine, waits to leave Platform 2 for Waterloo with the 1212 X Basingstoke stopping service on the 16th of June 1962. BR Standard Class 5 MT number 73112 Morgan Le Fay, the nameplate originally belonging to King Arthur Class 30750, passes Weybridge on the down through with a passenger service from Waterloo to Bournemouth. The brick pillars on the right of the photograph held up the offices of Mann & Co, an estate agent's office hence a sign on the overbridge. The starting signal on the up through was quite unique for the area as it was on the right hand side of the track due to sighting problems. The white diamond sign on the signal post meant that the signal was track circuited and if stopped at the signal Rule 55 detention of trains on running lines didn't need to be carried out unless detained for an unusually long time such as 10 minutes. An unknown named BR Standard Class 5 MT leaves Platform 3 at Woking with a passenger train to Waterloo. 
Fireman Dave Cole from Basestoke Depot looks back to make sure everything is in order. Out of all of the BR5 MTs allocated to the southern region, 20 members had the honour of carrying the nameplates of the once proud King Arthur class locomotives. On the 24th of February 1963, the Locomotive Club of Great Britain organised the West Countryman Limited Rail Tour to commemorate the 15th anniversary of the 1948 locomotive exchanges. Fittingly, the LCGB acquired the services of A4 Pacific number 60022 Mallard, which hauled the first leg from London Waterloo to Exeter Central and return. Original Battle of Britain class number 34049 Anti-Aircraft Command waits for the signal at the end of Platform 9 at Waterloo to run light to 9 ounce motor power depth over disposal. Looking at the partial head code on the smoke box, I think that the fireman has removed one of the disc boards from the left buffer beam and replaced it with the tail lamp, indicating that she had arrived from Waterloo with a boat train from Southampton Old Docks. Rebuilt Merchant Navy Class number 35022, Holland America Line, passes under the footbridge at St John's Woking with an up train from Exeter to Waterloo, circa 1962. S15 Class number 30503 works a fully loaded mixed freight train from Basingstoke to Woking. Interestingly, a prefabricated concrete plate layers up is shown on one of the wagons in the train. These were manufactured at the SR Concrete Works at Exmouth Junction. The works also constructed other structures such as footbridges, platform edge slabs and lampposts. On a Saturday evening in 1961, an up Limington to Waterloo Express approaches Woking Junction with V-Class schools 30918 Hurst Pier Point in charge. With the safety valves about to blow, the fireman is working the injector to top up the boiler and keep the pressure down. The locomotive's tender seems to have undergone a recent welding job, probably caused by a minor collision with another locomotive, which may have been left foul. N class number 31869 waits to depart from Guildford with a Reading Redhill passenger service circa 1963. Scaffolding surrounds the top of Guildford Cathedral to protect the workers that are installing the Golden Angel. BR Standard Class 4MT number 80095 gets ready to depart from Waterloo with a set of empty coaching stock bound for Walton Station via Twickenham, Adelston Junction and Weybridge, where the empty coaching stock would be shunted back into Oakland sidings. Empty coaching stock was quite often berthed there during the busy summer period. Other EMU stock shown in the photograph are the 1951 EPB electro-pneumatic brake variety and the 1936 two-bill EMU with Wessenhouse brake, which worked the Reading services. Another fine lineup of locomotives at Nine Elms Depot in 1961. In the foreground is Lord Nelson Class number 30856 Sir Francis Drake. Next is Q1 Class number 33008 and then an unidentified M7 Class. An N15 King Arthur Class, a rebuilt West Country Class and finally another M7 Class. V-Class Schools number 30926 Repton waits to leave Nine Elms Depot in 1961. One of 40 of the class designed by Richard Monsell, they were the most powerful 440 locomotives built. Another successful publicity campaign by the Southern Railway when named from 1930 onwards, they represented the public schools of the south of England, initially due to their proximity to the railway that served them. The class naming process consisted of pupils attending these schools visiting their engine during the naming ceremonies. Rays of sunlight streamed through the shed roof onto an assortment of locomotives stabled in Nine Elms Depot in 1961. 
They include rebuilt Merchant Navy class number 35027 port line, GWR pannier tank number 4681, E4 class number 32487, BR standard class 5MT number 73110, and finally another unidentified GWR pannier tank. With N class number 31828 and an unidentified standard class in the background at Eastley MPD, Mac turns his attention to taking a photo of two Guilford drivers, Alan Ackhurst on the left and Ted Harper on the right. Rebuilt West Country class number 34029, Lundy, prepares to depart Woking up through with a Salisbury Waterloo semi-fast service. Rebuilt Merchant Navy class number 35026, Lamport and Holt line, runs into Woking with a Waterloo to Salisbury semi-fast service in 1961. Mac must have sprinted the full length of the platform to take this shot of the same locomotive before she departs for Salisbury. Rebuilt West Country Class number 34097 Holsworthy departs Woking with a semi-fast service for Salisbury. A change of scenery to the Guildford Reading line and Mac has positioned himself to take the photograph of U Class number 31627 as she climbs out of Guildford up Pink Seal Bank with a Reading bound stopping service. A reasonably clean U-Class, number 31800, stands proudly outside Reading Southern Shed, waiting for a next turn of duty to work the Reading Red Hill line. Her last shed allocation was Guildford, and I had the pleasure of working on her as a fireman quite a number of times. She was withdrawn from service on the 31st of October 1965. U-Class, number 31628, runs into Guildford's Platform 4 with a stopping service for Red Hill from Reading. U-Class number 31622 awaits coal replenishment at Red Hill Motor Power Depot. As mentioned in Mac's introduction, Mac loved the Eastern region and spent hours at King's Cross and Top Shed taking photographs of these wonderful locomotives. As a young spotter myself, I fell in love with the graceful lines of the A4 Pacifics. Here are a selection of the wonderful photographs that Mac captured in the early 1960s. Two boys look on in wonder at the motion of A3 class number 60059 tracery as she rests at King's Cross Station, awaiting the release of her train in June 1962. The locomotive was condemned at Doncaster later that year, and was scrapped in June 1963. Brush Type 2, number D5672, also waits to be released from the adjacent platform. A1 Class, number 60119, Patrick Sterling, has just arrived at King's Cross from Leeds and boys from boarding school with their cases in tow head for their country homes. Like her numerical predecessor, number 60118, Archibald Sturrock, 60119 was named to commemorate an eminent GNR locomotive superintendent whose tenure at Doncaster covered three decades, 1866 to 1895. A4 Pacific number 60017 Silver Fox at King's Cross Top Shed in June 1962. While hauling the Silver Jubilee train on the descent of Stoke Bank in August 1936, 2512 Silver Fox achieved a maximum speed of 113 miles per hour, then the highest speed ever attained in Britain with a passenger train in ordinary service. 
Standing just outside the shed is another A4 Pacific, number 60003, Andrew K. McCosh, formerly named Osprey. B1 class, number 61179, sporting a King's Cross 34A shed plate, simmers gently at King's Cross Station after working the 12.05pm Butlins Express from Butlins Holiday Camp in Skegness on the 15th of June 1962. The driver sits on a mail barrow waiting for the locomotive to be released for disposal duties at Top Shed. Similarly, an unidentified Deltic diesel electric locomotive with the WTT number 1-Alpha-21 waits to be released from Platform 5 after working the 09.55 a.m. from Newcastle. Next come two fine shots of A3 class number 60110, Robert the Devil, as she leaves King's Cross Station on the 15th of June 1962. Quite a number of A3 and A1 Pacific locomotives were named after famous racehorses, and Robert the Devil won the St. Leisure in 1880. The first A3 was withdrawn in 1959 and by the early 1960s the Deltic fleet began to replace the A3s on the East Coast Main Line. The A3s moved to other duties, most notably the Express Passenger Service to Scotland on the Midland route out of Leeds. Number 60052 Prince Palatine was the last A3 to be withdrawn in January 1966. All were scrapped except for number 60103, number 4472 Flying Scotsman, which was withdrawn in January 1963 and sold into preservation. It's late afternoon on the 15th of June 1962, and A1 class number 60132 Marmion has arrived at King's Cross and waits on the blocks to be released. Built at Doncaster Works in 1945, number 60132 was withdrawn from service in June 1965 and not one A1 class locomotive was preserved. However, we do now have the newly built A1 class number 60163 Tornado. Another fine shot of 60132 Marmion and the information board displays the pending arrival of the 3.45pm from Skegness, the 4.6pm from Cambridge, the 4.11pm relief, 4.22pm from Harrogate, 4.39pm from Cambridge, Cambridge Buffet Express and finally the 4.58pm arrival from Hull. An unusual angle of photograph taken from the cab of A3 class number 60062 Minuru showing a view of the cab framing of both 60062 and A1 class 60132 Marmion. King's Cross 34A A4 Pacific number 60008 Dwight D Eisenhower originally named Golden Shuttle whose name was changed in 1945. The locomotive is now on display at the National Railroad Museum in Green Bay, Wisconsin, USA. The Camp Coffee, Spiller's Shapes, Dog Biscuits and Dulux Paint advertisements in the background certainly make this photograph truly iconic. Another shot of A4 Pacific 60008 resting after a long haul from Edinburgh. An advertisement hoarding above the ticket barrier pronounces the benefits of the Yorkshire Coastal Resort of Scarborough. Has everything for everyone. In the background is A1 class number 60132 Marmion, a name relating to the works of Sir Walter Scott, and A3 class 60059 Tracery. The squaddies exiting the station platform look as though they are about to go on some well-earned leave. A superb shot from the fireman's side window of A1 class Marmion makes an interesting frame of A4 Pacific number 60008.
A4 Pacific 60030 Golden Fleece at King's Cross Top Shed on the 5th of June 1962. Unfortunately, she was one of the first to be withdrawn from service, originally named Great Snipe. This was changed the following month to Golden Fleece. In 1994, one of her nameplates was sold at auction for a record £60,000, probably more than what it cost to build several of the locomotives in 1937. Nicknamed Streaks, I couldn't help but marvel at their beautiful design when I first visited King's Cross Station as a 13 year old spotter. It was love at first sight and I can still remember the first one I saw there, number 60026, Miles Bivore. However, the most famous A4 Pacific of them all, 60022 Mallard, is shown here with a bevel shaped smoke box front lifted at King's Cross Top Shed in 1962. On the 3rd of July 1938, number 4468 Mallard, the first of the class to enter service with the Carl Chap exhaust, set a world speed record of 126 miles per hour, hauling six coaches in a dynamometer car. Also shown in the background is A4 Pacific number 60017 Silver Fox. Preparation is complete. An A1 class number 60117, Bois Russell, exits the shed to run light to King's Cross Station to pick up her train. A discarded upturned oil feeder and firebox baffle plate lay in the foreground. Built at Doncaster Works in August 1948, she was the fourth of Arthur Peppercorn's A1s to be built and one of four class members allocated to Grantham. A4 Pacific number 60003, Andrew K. McCosh, on the 15th of June 1962. Originally named Osprey, she was renamed after the chairman of the locomotive committee at that time. Unfortunately, she was one of the first four A4 Pacifics to be withdrawn, along with number 60014, Silver Link, 60028, Walter K. Wingham, and 60030 Golden Fleece. Alex Mac McClymont looks on as BR Standard Class 7P number 70038 Robin Hood awaits departure from King's Cross with a passenger train bound for Boston, Lincolnshire. Another Britannia this time, number 70039 Sir Christopher Wren as she leaves King's Cross with a passenger service on the 15th of June 1962. Exhaust fumes billow from the diesel engines of Type 5 3300 horsepower English Electric Deltic number D9005 as it awaits departure with the 5.35pm King's Cross to Newcastle on the 16th of June 1962. The 22 locomotives in the class dominated the express passenger service on the East Coast Main Line until 1978 when Intercity 125 high speed trains were introduced. A4 Pacific number 60021 Wild Swan at King's Cross Top Shed on the 15th of June 1962. She was withdrawn from service the following year. The driver of Royal Scott Class number 46148, the Manchester Regiment, takes a well-earned break as the locomotive rests on the blocks at Euston in June 1962. In July 1960, the Midland Pullman was relaunched as a luxury all first class service using two new Blue Pullman six car diesel electric units. The Midland Pullman ran every weekday up to London in the morning and down to Manchester in the evening. To fill in between these turns, there was an afternoon return trip from St Pancras to Nottingham, described by railway staff as the most luxurious ECS in the world. The train had two kitchens and a full meal service was provided at every seat. 
On Tuesday the 11th of May 1965, Max had his driving exam with Inspector George Bolland, which he passed with flying colours. His driving exam involved working the 10.54am semi-fast stopping service to Basingstoke. The next series of photos show him as a past fireman in a driving capacity, working various turns and taking photographs of various firemen that were booked with him on those days. Mac has taken this photo of Guildford based N Class number 31411 at Woking Yard and the disc board suggests they are going to run light engine to Guildford. His fireman that day was Malcolm Pito and here he poses for the camera before they depart. With safety valve blowing Rebuilt West Country Class number 34036, Westward Ho, is ready to depart with the 12.12pm stone train empties from Woking Yard to Salisbury. This was a regular Guildford duty. Guildford farmer Jeff Sumner was Max Farman that day and poses for the camera before they depart for Salisbury. BR Standard Class 5MT number 73029 at Basingstoke MPD. Number 73029 was one of two Standard Class 5MT locomotives painted in Brunswick Green that were shedded at Guildford, the other being number 73092. Taken from the footplate of BR Standard Class 5MT number 73029, an up Bournemouth passenger service headed by rebuilt West Country Class 34095 Brentor approaches Basingstoke on its way to Waterloo. Just behind the tender of number 73029, a DMMU is also waiting departure from the up sidings. On the far side of the photograph, Basingstoke Yard box can be seen and beyond that an assortment of wagons destined for Eastleigh Yard. Ian Coles was Max Farmer that day and they wait for the signal at Basingstoke MPD to work a train to Woking. A trip out to Swindon with fellow fireman Ken Earl who took the photograph. Ken favoured the XGWR locomotives this one being 2800 class number 2818. Here Mac reciprocates and takes a photo of Ken on the footplate of 2818. Mac takes the opportunity of taking a photo of one of his favourite firemen, Sid Ford, whom he nicknamed Superheat Sid whilst disposing U-Class number 31639 at Guildford. He even had some business cards printed for him, proclaiming no turn refused and boat trains a speciality. Alan Gaff, Dick Bullen and Mac were sitting in the cab in spare when Harry Harvey, the running foreman, came in and said, I want a driver to go and pick this engine up. He got out a piece of paper and looking through his half cut glasses proceeded to say 600 and before he could say any more Mac said I'll do it, I'll do it. Harry Harvey then said no I'm sorry but I'm going to give the job to Alan as he's got more time. You can't do it Mac as you've only got three hours left to go. The job entailed going past the Basingstoke and take A4 Pacific 60024 Kingfisher light engine to 9 elms. The engine was to be used to haul the LCGB A4 commemorative rail tour from Waterloo to Exeter on Sunday the 27th of March 1966. Mac followed Harry back to the office pleading with him to let him do it, explaining that he wouldn't book any overtime but Harry although sorry was adamant that he couldn't do the turn. Mac went back to the cabin and said to Alan, do you mind if I come along with you for a ride? 
And Alan said, yes, of course you can. They all caught the train to Woking and then Basingstoke and went to see the running foreman who said that the locomotive was on its way, working in the 1110 freight from Banbury. So they all went onto the platform to await its arrival. Mac can't remember whether the crew they relieved were from Banbury or Reading, but they then worked the train into Basingstoke Down Yard and then took the locomotive to the depot. They turned the engine and took water and were then asked if they could go light engine to Mitchell Dever and work some empty petrol tanks back to Basingstoke. After performing this task and waiting to leave for Nine Arms Depot, the running foreman came out and told them that they couldn't leave just yet as they would be caught in the rush hour. He then instructed them to place the locomotive back inside the loco shed, probably because the A4's presence was causing a lot of attention. Alan moved the loco into the shed and as his fireman Dick Bullen had built up the fire because they thought they would just be leaving, he had difficulty in keeping the locomotive quiet. Inevitably, the safety valve lifted and blew an almighty hole in the shed roof. All sorts of debris rained down from the roof and splattered all over the top of the boiler and down the sides of the cab. Eventually, at about 1800, they left Basingstoke and Mac rode up with them to Woking, where Alan slowed down and Mac jumped off onto the platform with them carrying on light engine and iron elms. Now uncoupled after working a passenger service from Woking to Salisbury, Mac and his farmer Mick Foster take the locomotive to Salisbury Motor Power Depot for disposal. It's 1966 and the Bournemouth electrification scheme is in full swing with engineers' occupation on the downfast and upfast lines between Brookwood and Basingstoke. On the up-local line, a passenger service from Salisbury rushes by with rebuilt Battle of Britain class number 34056 Croydon in charge. There is complete engineers' occupation of the up and down through lines between Farnborough and Fleet, during the Bournemouth electrification scheme. A 350 horsepower shunter is assisting the relaying of the up through line, whilst the down Bournemouth Bell, headed by rebuilt Merchant Navy class number 35017 Belgian Marine, minus a smoke box number plate, runs past on the down local line. This photo shows Mac applying the vacuum brake controls of BR Standard Class 4 MT number 76011 at Basingstoke. Original West Country Class number 34006, viewed, simmers gently in the back road at Guildford Coal Stage as I get the coal forward. The wooden orphanage hut where I receive my firing tuition can be seen in the background. It's very likely that the locomotive is being prepared to work back to Salisbury with an empty stone train from Woking Yard. But before this can take place, the locomotive will have to be turned via the triangle, Weybridge and Adelston Junction, as a turntable at Guildford wasn't large enough to accommodate the bullied Pacifics. Following the aforesaid procedure, the same locomotive has just arrived at Woking Down Yard to work the 1402 stone train empties to Salisbury circa 1966. Here's Mac aboard M7 class number 30053 when the locomotive formed part of the Wogan Centenary celebrations in March 1995 in which it made several trips from Guildford to Aldershot and return. In the following photograph it's Mac's turn to do the driving as the train is about to pass twin bridges towards Woking. Whilst writing further ramblings of railwaymen, I had a great deal of help from the late David Hay, who ran his own incredible railway website called David Hay's Collection. We had never met and had only been in contact by email and by telephone. However, it was decided that two of my Guildford loco pals, 
who were going to be included in my book and the southern pages of his website should meet up with David and this was duly arranged. I'll let David take up the story. When I first saw Alex Mac McClymon's photos of steam days, it reminded me of another great BR footplate photographer, my dear friend the late Jim Carter, a man for whom the word doyen could have been coined. However, I never had the chance to meet Mac until recently, which brings me to the point. Having already worked together on a page about Southern Regions Railwayman's memories, it was decided to do a second and third page, and so we arranged to meet up at Leeds Railway Station to discuss our plans further. Having agreed a date, Jeff then decided that both Mac and Pat would be joining us. Now, I'm not prone to a nervous disposition in the normal way, but having three professional railwaymen, now retired, traipsing all the way from Guildford to Leeds for a site meeting, in the literal sense, was somewhat humbling. But then, as I discovered on the 20th of July 2011, there was no need to worry. After all, the World Wide Web is a wonderful resource, and it's through Jeff's emails, Pat's vivid writing and Max photography, that I feel I've known each one of them for a long time. So there I was, in a meeting with an Irishman, Englishman and a Scotsman, exchanging playful banter over a few pints on the outside terrace of Weatherspoon, and what stories they had to tell. A second and third Southern Region Railways Remember page is justly deserved. Compiling these pages has been a privilege and a joy. Alex Mac McClymont with the author at the book launch of Further Ramblings of Railwaymen with fellow contributors Dave Salmon and Pat Kinsella on Friday the 16th of November 2012.